this morning as uh, we do come. I, I love the excitement in God's house. I'd love to see you guys fellowship. I love, I know the kids, you know, you as parents, they kind of get on your nerves and bother you sometimes. But I would much rather have your kids in church. I love our old people and I love our kids. And and when you have when you have kids all the way through old people, that's what a family is. You've got you've got kids all the way through old people. And that's what a church is. We're God's family. We're a church family. Uh, we depend on each other. We love each other. We care for each other. We hurt with each other. We rejoice with each other. And that's that's what God's family is all about. Um, didn't mention it earlier. Roselle didn't say anything. But Kevin um, is out sick today as well. Um, he had too much dancing and birthday cake. <laughs> but uh, so just 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 pray for pray for him. Um, and uh, Ruthie, I jumped on Ruthie a while ago because a couple of weeks ago she was in the hospital and she didn't bother to tell me. And I didn't bother to tell most people. Well, I'm not most people. I'm, I'm your pastor and I'm your friend. Yeah. Um, and so, anyway, I'm glad to see you and glad to see you're feeling better and had safe travels and trips and got to see your family and fellowship and all that kind of stuff. And so, if you will turn to Jeremiah chapter 18 this morning, we're going to be talking about potters and caulkers. Um, and we're going to go to several different places this morning. So, um, I want to start with Jeremiah 18 and then we'll go to Chronicles and then we'll go to Ezekiel but um, in, in the principles of the word of God um, I heard a preacher say one time that the Bible was not written to me but it was written for me and the Bible says that all of these things were, were written for our examples and so we can draw from the principles of God's word we can draw from from the ocean. Maybe it was Jeremiah that was sent to the potter's house, but I believe there's a lesson there for all of us. And so, uh, simple message today, but, but hopefully you will leave encouraged uh, and maybe a little enlightened as to your role in the church and in God's family. So, in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse number one, it said, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Uh, a lot of times Jesus used parables and examples. And for the last few weeks I've, I've taught about gardening and seeding and stuff like that. And, and that's what Jesus, if you, if you read that verse, he says, I will cause thee to hear my words. And how is he causing him to hear his words? By giving him an example, by giving him an object lesson, if you will. Um, and I believe God uses object lessons to get through to us a lot of times. Um, sometimes when you're driving down the highway and you're reminded of a thought and God brings a thought to your mind of, of some principle that he's trying to get into your life. Or, or maybe you, you read a verse or you hear a song or whatever. And here he says, I will cause thee to hear my words. <clears throat> so then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. And, and I want to stop right there. There's, there's several things, that, that there's simple things right there in that, those few verses that I want you to understand. But God uses, as, as I said, God uses object lessons. He made Jeremiah go down to the potter's house. And we have the potter who took a handful of clay and, and he got it up on the wheel. And those of you that have ever done any molding or whatever, with clay, you know it has to be warmed up, it has to be beaten, it has to be squished around, it has to be uh, just just tortured to be able to get it into a pliable position. And then he put it up on the wheel, and those of you who know anything about it, the wheel was operated with the foot and it spins and you use your hands and stuff. Um, and, and, and so she, she, he, whoever the potter was in this particular case, began to make a vessel of whatever he was making, and it had a it had a mistake. It had a it had an error. It had a a mar. It had um, it it had a, a, a imperfection of some kind. And so the potter got mad and he slammed it down down on the table and he threw it out the front door and he, he cussed around. And, no, it's not. He said he just simply made another usable vessel out of it. He took the very same clay and he made a, a usable vessel 
as it seemed good to the potter. Now there's a whole lot of sermon and a whole lot of lesson in that, but those of us that have made mistakes in life and we feel like that we've made mistakes that are beyond God's capability of forgiving or ever using us or whatever the case may be, this proves that that's not the case. The potter took the same hunk of clay. God takes the same person that has made mistakes, that has caused agony or whatever along the journey. We've, we've, we've screwed up. Sometimes we've, we've, we've thought that we were unlovable. We've thought that we were unusable. We thought whatever the case may be, but the potter, the one who was in charge, you and I are not in charge. Just in case you thought you were, I'm letting you know this morning you're not. God is in control of your life. He's allowed you to make mistakes. He's allowed you to screw up and he's allowed you to come back to him and he is now shaping you into a vessel that can be used for whatever his purpose is in our lives. And so that object lesson was there. But the key that I want to talk about this morning is potters and caulkers. So if you will, go with me to Ezekiel chapter 27. Ezekiel 27. Ezekiel 27 and verse number 9. It says, The ancients of Gebal and the wise men thereof were in thee, thy caulkers and all the ships of the sea with their mariners were in the to occupy their merchandise. Now, what he has done, what am I doing here? Yeah, okay. If you, if you look at the whole chapter, you'll see where they were talking about the building of the, the, the tire. And, and it was a ship and they were doing the fine linens, they were doing the molding, they were doing the sails, they were doing all of this kind of stuff. They were making preparation. But, but the key in this one was the people that were in the bottom of the ship, not visible to anybody, and they were the caulkers. Everybody knows what caulking is, right? Y'all know, know what caulking is? I started bringing a caulking gun this morning just to illustrate for those of you who don't know what it is. And what, it, what, what does caulking do? What, does, what, what do you do with the caulking gun? What do you do with the caulk that's in the caulking gun? It seals, it seals what? It seals the cracks. So if they were in the bottom of the boat where nobody was around, nobody was seeing what was going on, it didn't get the fine sails, it didn't get the balconies, it didn't get all of this stuff, but they were down there, and in case this thing had a leak in it, they were there to caulk. It doesn't matter how beautiful the ship is if it sinks. You know, it doesn't matter if it's on the bottom of the ocean floor, what good is it? And a leak unchecked and a leak un unrepaired will eventually sink the boat. You know, I, I noticed out the window this morning, Kevin's kayaks in the back of his truck out there. He's probably going dog training this morning or something. Um, but if he goes out there in the water training his dogs and throwing the ducks out or whatever, and he gets out there in his kayak and has springs a leak in it, and he doesn't take care of it or he doesn't get his butt back to shore, he's going to get wet. He's going to sink his kayak. And, and so the same thing with this, this big, beautiful ship, and they put all of this, this, this uh, work into it, and it doesn't matter what the preacher is. It doesn't matter what the song leader is. It doesn't matter what, what anybody else. Um, I, was, I was thinking, I think it was last week, maybe it was the week before last, I don't know. I was telling you I was going to get other people to start doing stuff around the church and doing sermons and, and song leading, and we've started doing some of that this morning, other people doing things besides me. And I told Aaron and Melvin and a couple more of them to go ahead and get a sermon ready, and, and they were going to do some preaching. And, and Aaron says, I cut grass. <laughs> you know, the grass needs to be cut. The grass needs to look good at God's house. Without the grass cutters, it doesn't matter how beautiful the building is if you can't see it. You know? and, and, but it was, it, was kind of, it was kind of ironic that God laid this on my heart and on my mind, and it was just a few days earlier that Aaron, when I said, you know, you need to get the sermon together, and he just frankly said, I cut grass. <laughs> In other words, I don't do no preaching. I don't get up there where everybody can see me. I don't stand before the congregation. I'm not in the spotlight. I'm not in the in the priority position. I cut grass. And it's the same way with these folks. They said they were down in the bottom of the ship where nobody else is around caulking the boat. It doesn't matter what party's going on upstairs. If the boat sinks, the party's over. And if we don't have people that are caulking the ship, 
in our church. If we don't have people doing the bulletins and doing the offerings and picking up the trash and, and wiping down the pews and making sure that the music is going, if we don't have all of the caulkers going on, the church is not going forward. You know, the preacher's only a part of it. And we're no more important than anybody else. I know some preachers think they're up on a pedestal and they, they deserve all the accolades and all that stuff. And I, and I do appreciate the position that God has placed me in and he's put me in a position of responsibility in pastoring the church. But my job is no more important than Aaron's job cutting the grass. My job is no more important than Wayland's job cleaning out the toilets. My job is no more important than your job picking up a piece of bubble gum on the floor. I noticed this morning when I came by over there, there's two uh, them, them got me wrappers on the floor back there in front of Phoebe somewhere. Now, I don't know if she put them there or whatever, but somebody's going to pick those up because it ain't going to be me because I ain't going back there no more today. Uh, now, if they're still there next Sunday, I'll pick them up. But I'm sure that somebody's going to pick them up before I get a chance. We need those people. Those are conquerors. Now, go with me, if you will, to to do what? There you go. Be your call. Go with me, if you will, please, to First Chronicles, chapter four. First Chronicles, chapter four. For four chapters now, chapter one all the way through chapter four, and it continues on. There's a whole bunch of names. Any of you ever tried to do your, you know, through the through the year Bible reading, you get to this and, and so and so get so and so and so and so beget so and so. There's a whole lot of begetting going on back then. I ain't sure they had time to do anything else. There's a whole lot of begetting going on. But but they they they've given this long list, these these four chapters so far, of all the important people, all of the fine linen makers and all of the carpenter makers and all of all of this other stuff and, and their positions and, and where they lived and where they were doing. And all. then we come to chapter four and look at verse number twenty-three. I can find it. There it is. Go back to chapter. Uh, go back to verse number twenty-two because we'll give them their names. And Jochim and the men of Chosbia and Joash and Seraph, who had dominion in Moab and whatever this guy's name is, and these are the ancient things or the records. Verse number twenty-three. These were the potters and those that dwelt among the plants and the hedges. And there dwelt with the king for his work. They weren't. They, they didn't live in the house. They didn't live in the kingdom. They didn't. They didn't have a prominent position. Any of that kind of stuff. He says these were the potters. That's why Jeremiah was sent down to the potter's house, so that they could understand. And here we have this group of people who you got all of these these named people and and the sons of this. And if you have headings in your Bible, it talks about the sons of Esau and the sons of David and. And the son and, and all of this kind of stuff, and they're giving all of these lineages of these 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 uh, these high up people in God's service, and and then God gets down to the place of the prison, and then there here's the potters, and I'm going to make sure that the potters are put in the very same book as all of the rest of these important people, and and that's why my sermon this morning is a very short one because I've been really busy this week and I want to go home because I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> But but we have we have all of this important stuff. We have the, the preachers and the evangelists and the and the big philanthropists philanthropists. There we go. Yes. There you go. Those, those people who like people. Um, you know, we have all of these people who who the spotlight shines on, and they get on their TV, and they get you know the prominent, and they get all kinds of views on the internet, and apparently they get stars or whatever. I don't know exactly. You give me stars or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll give you a star, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I went to the dollar store the other day, and I couldn't find any, so I didn't know what to give you. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, we have all of these. We have all these. You know, we have all these movie stars. We have all these sports heroes, and we we have all of this stuff. Well, if you didn't have the guy that cleaned the, the the jerseys, if you didn't have the guy that wiped down the helmets, if you didn't have the guy who cleaned the locker room, if you didn't have all of these people behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. And it's the same way in God's house. It's the same way in, in the church of God. You got the preacher who stands up there. You got the song leader who stands up there. You got you got whoever else who stands up in the prominent position. But you got to have somebody that cleans the toilet. You got to have somebody that cuts the grass, even if they miss four pieces. You got to have somebody. 
You have principal bulletins. You got to have somebody that fills up the candy bowl. You got to have somebody that does the children's church. You got to have somebody that, that keeps up with the finances of the church. You got to have somebody that pays the bills for the church. I mean, all of these potters and caulkers that are involved in the church, and God places them in the very same chapters as all of these important people. All of this, this fine shipbuilding and all of this stuff. And he said, but then the caulkers are down here patching the leaks, catching, making sure that nobody else, making sure all them fancy people don't sink. You know, it, it, it's, you, I, I never watched the movie Titanic, but I think somebody said there was a bunch of important people on there and they drowned just like the rest of them. You know, it, it, it's, but if, if we don't have the potters and the caulkers in the church, then the church ain't going to last very long. If we don't have somebody that cleans, if we don't have somebody that puts the bulletins together, if we don't have somebody that, that takes care of the kids, if we don't have somebody that takes care of the grass, if we don't have somebody that teaches the Sunday school classes or whatever, if we don't have people that fill up the offering plates, if we don't have those people, if we don't have the potters and the caulkers, we don't have a church. And it says there in verse number 23, it says, they, they, they dwelt with the king for his work. Whatever God asks you to do. You know, I asked Aaron to preach a sermon. He said, I cut grass. You know, it, it's, it's, God hasn't called me to preach a sermon, apparently. Yeah. Um, God hasn't called him to, to lead the singing. God hasn't called him to do whatever. But he does the work of the king. Apparently, the king is asking him to cut the grass. And, you know, it, 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 Kevin keeps up with the, with the finances of the church. You know, that's no glory in it. There's no bank calls me about every other week and say uh, there's, a, there's a discrepancy in the deposit slip here. How do you want me to fix it? Well, is it for us or is it for you? You know, it, it, I just said, you know, take care of it. But, but 99% of the time, Kevin has all of the bills paid. He has all of the finances kept up with. He has all of the stewardship reports done. He has all of your, your gifts to the church labeled and listed. And, and every year, at the end of the year, and if you want them more often than that, he can just print it out for you. He's got all of the stuff. That, uh, Courtney goes to Sam's and orders all of the candy for, for the candy bowls. And you guys, I mean, y'all ought to be putting her up on a pestle with what candies y'all eat. Good Lord. Our candy bill is more than a light bill. But uh, she goes and, and she picks out all the candy and then she brings it down here and she hides it in a certain place. Uh, so y'all can just go through there and pick out all the good stuff. I know y'all. And, and and then she fills up the candy bowls and stuff for you. Waylon comes up here when he's able and he cleans the chair. I understand yesterday Gabby and Phoebe and, and, and Tiffany and some of the others came up and did some cleaning and stuff and, and all kind of pulling weeds and whatever else. You know, it, it's, it's everybody that has something to do. Um, you say, well, I don't do anything. You ever pray for me? I need those. I can't do this without those. You ever put any money in one of them little plates up here? Somebody, one, one of our men, he don't come here anymore, but he actually made the plates you put your money in. You know, he took his time. He took his talent. And, did that drop? I don't know. I don't know. This, this, one, this one's really cool, though. All of our prayer requests, somebody put them up here on the floor. And I guess what they're doing is looking at that verse about falling prostrate before the Lord. <laughs> prostrate, no, no, prostrate is something inside. <laughs> prostrate is the one we're going to. Yeah, y'all leave your prostrates out of this area. You know I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's, but it's, it's every. It doesn't matter. These kids, you know, they're they're pretty worthless and and, and good for nothing, and you know, we just we can, you know, we don't even need them for anything. But you know, whenever I fill up the pop machine in there, they come in there and they grab all the boxes and they smash them down. They run them out to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have a feed downstairs, they grab the trash cans and they, they run them out to the dumpster and they clean up. Yeah. There's somebody down there. They grab a broom and they start sweeping up and they put the chairs up. And and and, and I get a call there once in a while and say, one of the lights, you know, somebody left one of the lights on at church. You know, saves money. You know, all kinds of things that everybody can do. And you're the potters and the caulkers that God is talking about. And God wrote about them in his word. The Bible says in the New Testament that all of the acts, the, the, there's not enough pages in the world that can tell, can, can contain, contain all of the, the, the acts and the things. But God chose in his word to mention the ones who nobody looks at, the ones who doesn't hold a prominent position, the ones who, who have... You're, you're, you probably go through life and never be recognized. I try to recognize everybody around here. 
I try to I try to thank you for your contribution. I try to thank you for your service. If you pick up a piece of trash on the floor, I try to thank you for it. I try to make sure you know I appreciate every single thing you do. If you come in here and you sit down on a pew and you occupy that two-foot section of oak pew, that's a, that's, that's a potter and a caulker. It, I've, I've preached when there's nobody in here. During that COVID thing, when we shut down that one Sunday or two Sundays or whatever it was, I came in here and I preached to nobody. You, 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 you fulfill a very important position. And then they said we could have people who worked. So we had, we had all kinds of song people. We had sound people. We had greeters. We had all kinds of stuff. Everybody had a job. You know, but, but it was, and, and these kids, it doesn't matter what I ask them to do. Every one of these kids, I'll ask them to do something and they just jump right on. You know, they don't say, I don't want to do that. They just, they just go do it. Now, most of them come up and ask me, you got 50 cents? You know? <laughs> but, and and, and I, I try to always have 50 cents. Uh, Russell stuck his money in the in the pop machine this morning. And uh, it, it cheated him. That's how we get the offerings up. But uh, it, um, he stuck his money in the pop machine. He didn't have no money. I reached in my pocket and I stuck it in there and he got the pop. You know, I, try to, I try to make sure they know that I appreciate these kids. They, they come in here every, every Sunday morning and they listen to me yammer for 45 minutes. And then they come in here and listen to me for another 45 minutes. And, 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 and you know, and I've talked to myself and listening to me is no fun. <laughs> but they come in and, and if I ask one of them, can you, can you go to my truck and get something for me? Can you run this out to the dumpster for me? Potters and caulkers. You know, if somebody asks you, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Tell them you want to be a potter. Tell them you want to be a caulker in God's house, in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God. No matter what God asks us to do, you know, God may not ask you to do anything but make a phone call to somebody. God may not, not ask you to do anything, but, but well, I, I know I was talking to a man this past week, and I was talking about so-and-so talking. He said, well, I just texted him. I said, well, if you're under 35, that's what y'all call talking. And so, y'all just, instead of talking to each other, you just talk to them. People, you're, anybody else in here planning on having a kid anytime? No, over here. Okay. Anybody else planning on having any kids, any more kids? Y'all gonna have about a dozen more? You gonna have? Okay. There's a strong possibility, you better be careful, because there's a strong possibility that your next generation of children will only be born with thumbs. <laughs> Evolution doing its thing. God. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's, it's, no matter what you do for the king, he recognizes it. If you come by here on Sunday morning and you take all the leftover bulletins and you drop them in the trash can, God recognizes your potter, your cocker. Because if we keep leaving the bullets and leftover bullets up here, they just keep piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to print them. Somebody's got to pull the screen down so we can sing. Somebody's got to hook up the speaker so that they can find it. Somebody's got to find it on the on the where'd you go? YouTube or okay? Just somebody's got to do that. Somebody's got to put money in the offer plate so we can keep the lights on. Y'all see one of them speakers so you can get in here. Somebody, somebody in that area ain't been doing their part. <laughs> <laughs> Not mentioning no names, but his initials are TS. <laughs> But that's not true either because I was sitting back there this morning when the offering plate went by and I saw Candace's hand drop over in the offering plate. You see? So she paid her part down. Or what'd you do? <laughs> oh, that was his money. Okay, there we go. But no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But, but I'm, 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 I'm playing, but I'm being serious too. You think what you do is not important, but it is. You may not think it means anything. There's a, there's a bulletin laying on the floor in front of Colston down on the floor. I hope when service is over here, we sit there and pick it up. Yeah. It, 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 but it's important. No matter what you do for the king, it's important. Just being here. Some of you have come in from, from great distances. Uh, you know, Courtney and Luke and them, they pack up half the house to come down here on, on Sunday mornings to be. They could, they could find a church in building somewhere. Kevin's got a, got a church within walking distance of his house over in Custer. I mean, it's not our church, but, you know. 
And that's and that's something special about it. You know, when Candace and Tanner lived out yonder in the boonies, they would come in. Instead of finding another church, they found another house in town. <laughs> but it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's I, I want you to understand and I realize that no matter what you do for God, it's important to God. I'm not God, but it's important to me. Y'all do this, y'all started doing this pastor appreciation every month instead of just once a year. You know, and it means a lot. You know, you, you, I was talking to some guys the other day when we were doing some construction projects and stuff, and me and Waylon and others have, have built houses, and, and framing is easy. Putting up stud walls are easy. You know, throwing up trusses and stuff, it, it's easy. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought to do that. The finish work is where it's at. And those of you that have ever done finish work, you know you can go in and, and, and you can, you, you, you go into a, a foundation and you can slap up some walls and you can, you can separate some studs and get all this stuff. And it looks like you've done something. I mean, you walk away and say, man, we've got a lot accomplished today. But any of you that are familiar with finish work, putting in your, your receptacles, and putting in your light switch covers and, and, and trimming, trimming the door frames and putting the, the caulking around the windows. And, 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 and people walk by and they ask, what have you done today? <laughs> You've worked there all freaking day long. And, and, and somebody come in, what have you done? See, but without the covers on the light switches and without the caulking around the windows and without the caulking around the bathtub and without the caulking around the drain in the sink, you're pretty soon going to have a big mess. But you don't see the caulking around the drain. Most of you didn't even know you had caulking around your drain in the sink. You know, if nobody goes in there and hooks up the drain line up under the bathtub, if, if, if nobody goes in there and connects the wires, I mean, you go over here to these light switches, and, and, and man, the switch looks good. It's clean. It's, it's got the screws in the right. Somebody even adjusted the screws. They're as anal as I am. And the screws are pointing the same direction. But if nobody had connected the wires inside there, you couldn't see it. But if nobody connected the wires, we wouldn't have a light. See, I just, all the lights are gone. Somebody connected the wires. I know who it was. But, you know, if, 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 all of, I mean, this is nice, big, beautiful microphone. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. One of them quality ones. And the wire just runs out there so neat and organized. But if nobody connected. <laughs> if nobody connected it. You see what I mean? Somebody turned the switch off. But, but, but the potters in the car. God mentions the potters and the caulkers. And they're important to him. Behold, the sower went out to sow. Somebody's got to plant the seed. Some water, some plant. But God gives the increase. And we're doing it for the king. That's what it says there in that verse. Whatever the work of the king. Why do you do what you do? Why do you put offering in the offering plate? Why do you clean out the toilet? I mean, somebody has gone in there and sat on the toilet, and they have left a mess. And you clean it. God says that job is important. We might not think it's important, but God does. You know, Ruthie is way back yonder in the back, sitting on the back row. I can barely even see her from here. <laughs> but she's occupying that section. I asked Rose this past week, I said, have you heard from Ruthie lately? I've missed her for the last few weeks. She said, oh yeah, she was in the hospital. <laughs> I'm a pastor. Somebody really ought to tell me when one of our folks is in the hospital. <laughs> I know y'all got these these ladies prayer warriors and all this this, this you know these communicate. Somebody might ought to involve me if somebody's going to the hospital. Okay. She's okay. She's fine. Yeah, I know she's fine now. I got pictures of her down in Vegas. Timeshare at the hospital. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I want you to know this morning, no matter what you do for God in God's house, it's appreciated. I went down the stairs this morning again when I got here and I looked at that shelving unit that Luke built for the TV downstairs. You know, it could have been just a shelf with a couple brackets on it. But it's a, it's, a, it's a cabin. It's a really nice cabin. And he didn't, I mean, he might have done it for me. But his ultimate purpose is he did it for God. You do what you do for the king. And the king appreciates it. And I want you to know as your pastor, I appreciate it too. But whether you do it for me or whether you do it for him, it's appreciated. And, and God thought enough of it to talk about the potters, the talkers, others, 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 others. Now that's cool. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in the black church. I got the organ going over in the background. I wonder what caused that. Was it really? I think maybe that's what it was. But I want you to leave here today knowing that whatever you do for the king, the king appreciates it. And when you feel like that what you do doesn't matter, remember it does to him. Whether you're just sitting, I mean, every one of these kids sitting up here, God looks down at you and smiles. Because he says, suffer when the little children come unto you. No, that's not exactly what it is. <laughs> But Jesus loves kids. And they love him. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the message for today. I hope you leave here today being encouraged about what you do. Now, if you ain't doing nothing, maybe you ought to find something to do. Maybe you ought to pick up a piece of trash on your way out of the building today. Maybe you ought to make sure that all your bulletins that you've stuck in the song racks are picked up. Maybe your candy wrappers that you dropped on the floor are picked up. There's been more movement in that church in this church in the last three minutes than ever has before. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you, God, for appreciating what we do for you. God, we, we, we hope that we serve you for the right reason. We hope, God, that we are pleasing to you. We hope that you we, we are a sweet-smelling savor to your nostrils. God, we just love you, and we appreciate what you've done for us. We appreciate what you've done to us, and we appreciate what you've done through us. God, I ask you to bless these people as we leave this place today. Give us a good afternoon. Give us a joyful afternoon. Give us a safe week this week. Give healing where needed. Give encouragement where needed. Give prosperity where needed. God, all of the things that we're in need of, you already know. And so, God, according to your will, we ask you to meet those needs. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.